sort of shape the narrative that we're confronting today. So, with that, um, where are we now? Um, we are now facing, we're, it's now predicted there will be 2.5 million foreclosures in 2008. Um, there were 1.5 foreclosures in 2007. Um, of the, the disproportionate amount of these foreclosures were um, because of subprime loans and subprime lending. Pending home sales fell 14% in May, um, and that's a um, 4.7 in May and 14% um, from the previous year. So we're seeing a severe housing crisis, um, and people uh, don't have the ability um, to, to either buy mortgages or just don't have the will or don't have the resources to do so. We've also heard about the, the bailout of Bear Stearns and capital markets and the ripple effect that this had and the, the, the extent to which the capital markets in general are, are viewed as being threatened. We also know that many homeowners are what, are, what is called um, underwater, and you've heard this already, that many of the the, the idea that many homeowners can be saved is based on the idea that um, the, what they owe is actually exceeds the, the value of their home. Um, Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson recently said that many of today's unusually high number of foreclosures are not preventable. So there are limitations on what city and states can do. A lot of what's been proposed has been on the federal level. But a lot of us who work on the city and state level are struggling with how can we actually make a difference there. And I think that a lot of our focus needs to go there, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a moment. We've heard already about the Federal Reserve regulations, um, and we also know that federal legislation has taken a long time. I mean, when you consider the fact that we are now more than a year into this crisis, and with all due respect to um, Con Congressman Miller, we have to acknowledge that there's been a, a huge abdication of, of responsibility on, on behalf of um, Congress to meet the needs of, of, of this crisis. I'm not going to bother go through the, the mortgage funding process as it stands now, the way it is now with securitization. It's very complex. And Hale has already done, I think, a good job of breaking that down. The, the point we need to make is that things are not the way they used to be. We no longer are dealing with a financial institution that has a 20 or 30 year relationship with the borrower and is on the hook um, for, with the borrower as a result. Risk is now spread um, far and wide and that has helped lead to the, the problems that we're facing today. So let's talk very briefly about the role of the press in perpetuating what I would consider to be a non-progressive narrative about this crisis. One, you have a lot of conservative bloggers who show a lot of hostility to what they consider to be the subprime borrower. The, the, the subprime borrower. And the, and the basic narrative is that these people got us into this mess. It's their fault, and we shouldn't be sinking any money into trying to, to help them out. The conservative press and the mortgage lobby essentially, you know, has different narratives. One is that free markets are good and there should be nothing done to intervene in, in, in those free markets, unless, of course, um, it helps to um, sustain uh, the capital markets and financial institutions there. That government intervention in general is bad. That consumers are whiners. Um, Phil Graham recently said that, um, and was thrown under the bus um, by Senator McCain as a result, but it, I think it reflects the attitude by conservatives out there that, you know, this, the, the troubles that we're seeing in the economy are really uh, our imagination and that we're, we're, we're just weak and we're whining about it. 